a branch of engineering that caters for design, development and maintenance of software is termed software engineering. This branch of engineering was introduced to address the issues of low quality software projects. Most software jobs require at least a bachelor degree in software engineering, but studying computer science or any STEM related courses could help as well. To focus on software engineering, it is expected to gain and integrate knowledge from various subject areas including computer programming, data structures, numerical methods, statistics, and the list goes on and on. In this episode, we are going to look at mobile application development, what it takes to become a software engineer, and other relevant information as it concerns mobile application development. My name is Abimbola Ilori and you are watching ICC Today. Now to the main business of the day. I have joining me virtually Mr. Larry Ibironke, who is a professional software engineer and has designed several applications. Mr. Ibironke, you are welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. We start the show by analyzing what software engineering is all about. Can you please tell us more about software engineering aside from the book the, um, literal definition? Now, first and foremost, answering the question, what exactly is software engineering? This has to do with the process of designing, developing, testing, and maintaining a programs or programs that are meant to run on a computer, on a system, or on a mobile device, or also on any electronic device. Now, I deliberately had that because we shouldn't look at it only as running on a computer or on a mobile device. With the advent of uh, IoT now and the web uh, three-pointers, anything is actually possible. So those softwares can actually run either on the computers on the mobile devices or any electronic uh, devices that we may have. Now, what exactly is the work of a software or engineer? Now, going by what I've just said now, their work is mainly to develop, test, maintain those programs that the users will be able to use at the end of the day, making sure that the, uh, the connection between the backend and what the users are using is actually smooth. Now, it is also very okay important for us to know that this software that these OK engineers work with can also be divided into two. Now, it can be a system software and it can also be an application software. Now, going by that also, it simply means that we can have two types of uh, software OK engineers. Now, the first one, most times we call them the backend developers. Now, those are the ones that actually work with the uh, system software. Those are uh, the programs that runs on the background. While the second category, they are the one that we call the front end developers. Those are the ones that work with the, uh, with the Oak application software that actually runs on the system software. Now, the truth is that there are some, which I will call the third category, they combine the two, both the system software and also the Oak application software, and they are mostly called the full stack developers. Going by your analysis, let's digress a bit and be practical. What does it take to become a software engineer? I mean, in practical terms now, what does it take to become a software engineer? Now, uh, what does it take to become a software engineer? It's a very interesting question, but let me start like this. If you had this question like 20 or 10 years ago, the answer would be slightly different from the answer I'm going to give you now, because what would have been the answer then is that you need to go to the college, spend like four or five years, read a course like uh, computer or engineering, or mathematics, then you come out, have some of those trainings, and you can become a software engineer. But time has changed. Things have become better. Now, there are several routes that even, let me say you are a lawyer, 
and you want to have a career change, you have a flair for tech and you want to come into the tech space, there are routes whereby you can take, even if you don't have a background. But having said that, uh, you notice that people, those that have that background, may have an, an earlier edge on those that don't really have that background. So what does it take to become a software engineer? With the advent of so many tools out there, uh, things have become easier. And when we are talking about the time that it takes you to become a software oak engineer, um, just like every other oak endeavors in life, nothing comes cheap. But I don't want people to see it as if, oh, I can't become a software oak engineer, it is something hard. No, everything we do in life comes with sacrifice. With time, with dedication, with hard work, anybody can decide to do a career shift. I'm moving to tech. But if you want me to be specific about the time, it, it can range between, let me say, six months and four years. And you must note this, becoming a software engineer is not something that you become and you stop. So it's a continuous thing. So which means even after that four years, which I just put as a kind of a timeline, you must continue to actually uh, increase in knowledge about what we are talking about. Okay, I haven't said that and I'm listening to what you have um, analyzed so far. What are the skills needed to, for software engineering? Concerning how easy will it be for you to become a software org engineer and also the skills that are needed. I will say this, just like with any org endeavors in life, nothing comes cheap, nothing comes easy. You must be ready to put in the time and to put in the work. And at the same time, having said that, concerning the skill, apart from the programming skill that is actually important, that you learn maybe from school or even from any of those boot camp that you may get involved in, there are some soft skills which I believe is actually important for any software or engineers to have to be successful. And the first is you must have the passion to create. It's not just a normal passion. You must have this burning passion to create and not just to or create, to even innovate with your creation. What do I mean by that? You must be someone that is ready to build and at the same time, in quotes now, pull down what you built with your own hand and rebuild again. You must be someone that is not ready to stay on what you built yesterday. And you must be someone that is always ready to even critique yourself. Now, if you are someone that doesn't like people criticizing your work, I doubt it if you can be a successful software engineer. Apart from that, you must be someone that is persistent, that is ready to stay on a tax for days. I know you to be an expert in app development. I would like you to explain to us in detail app development and how mobile application works. As a software engineer, you either work with um, a system software or you are working with um, an application software. Now, so you may ask me what exactly is an application software. But before answering that, let me quickly go and give you a kind of a quick uh, explanation about the system software. Those are mainly the operating systems. They form like um, the bedrock of what the old programs we run on. That is like the OS, the old operating system of either a mobile device or a computer system or any old electronic uh, device that you may have. Now, what exactly now is the application software? Now, that is actually a program that uh, leverage on the features that is on the uh, system software. As an example, an health app on a mobile device would definitely try to take advantage of the temperature sensor that is actually on a smartwatch. So that's how it works. Now, in a simple term, a, okay, an application software is like, an app, is like a program that is actually developed to take an advantage of the operating system or of the system software that has been built on a particular device or on a computer. Another okay, example is uh, the WhatsApp. 
that we all use that is actually an application software now the whatsapp has features like text voice and all that now the voice on it or the video on it that you take your own pictures and you send that that is actually taking advantage of the text the voice or the video features that has been built into the operating system which is actually the system software now talking about the categories of uh, mobile app let me say this when it comes to tech today's answer may not be tomorrow's answer so i directly say that because um as this is on record presently we have like six broad categories of uh, different types of uh, mobile apps that we may have but with the internet of things getting involved in almost everything we do i'm so sure the category will keep expanding but for now we can have the productivity app the social app the lifestyle app the oak educational app the oak entertainment app and the games those are the different broad categories of um, mobile app that we may have at this junction among many other things can you tell us what mobile apps can do or, or let me let me say it like this to what extent can we make use of mobile app to what extent can we use mobile app there is this popular saying that is always used in the oak industry which says there is an app for that now what it means is that anything you can conceive of everything you can imagine of there is an app for that let me also give you an instance before uh coronavirus came in and all that and all that most of us weren't weren't really much into this um uh, virtual meeting and all that and all that and all that but once it came there is now so many apps outside there that are taking care of that particular need so what i will say is this in as much as there is a need there is a human need i can assure you there will also be an app for that it may not be in the market yet but i'm so sure someone will think of it someone will see the need and someone will be able to actually provide a solution to that. So in as much as we have a need, there will also be an app to actually take care of that need. When we talk about apps, it's not only in terms of mobile. We also have the web app and we also have the uh, progressive uh, web app and we have the native app when it comes to the mobile space. I'd love us to continue this conversation, but obviously time will not permit us. However, on a final note, so what do you have to say to anyone aspiring to pick a career in software engineering? Now, in closing, let me just encourage us because um, many times you hear people say, ah, those people in tech, they are special people, you know, and uh, maybe when they hear them with the jargon, the technicalities that has been spoken and all those things um don't that don't let that discourage you tech guys are not aliens they are people like us with like passion they started from somewhere so if you have the passion if you know you like creating things this is something that you want to do you can do it you just need to be dedicated you need to be ready to put in the time to put in the work and i can assure you after some times you too, if you start saying those are uh, jargons, those technicalities, and, and you now say, oh, there's nothing even there, you can do this. So anybody can become a software engineer and can work in tech. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Ibirunke, for joining us on this program. We look forward to having you some other time. Ah, thank you so much for having me. And that is our package for today. Kindly engage us on all our social media platforms. Like, share, and comment on our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to receive notification on new updates. You can watch us live on your mobile by downloading our apps from App Store and Google Play Store. 
You can also watch us live on our website on www.ogtv.com.ng forward slash live. And until next time, when I return with another package, I'll always say that if it is digital, it's part of ICT.